Over the past decade, conflicts in the Middle East have taken a huge toll on human life. Those people who survive the bombs and bullets can be left with incredibly complex injuries, which their country's beleaguered healthcare systems are in no position to treat. I'm Dr. Javed Abdelmunem in Amman, Jordan, to visit the only hospital in the Middle East that offers free reconstructive surgery to help rebuild the bodies and the lives of those injured in the violence. Squeezed in between Iraq, the occupied West Bank, and Syria, Jordan has become a regional safe house for people fleeing conflict in neighboring countries. Around 630,000 refugees from Syria alone live here, making up nearly 10% of Jordan's total population. The vast majority of Syrians live outside of refugee camps, in urban areas such as the border town of Ramtha, where I've come to meet Hassan Sarhan and his family. This, uh, <laughs> After living through two years of civil war, Hassan, his wife Lama Abazid, and their five children left Syria in 2013 after their family home was destroyed in an explosion. بتعمل شنو في الشارع وفي البيت الصاروخ ضرب البيت انا الصاروخ فات على الكريدور بالبيت وانا طلعت من الكريدور ما بعرف انه بناتي مصابات بس وانا نازل نزول يقولوا في بعد بنت هن معي انا معي ثلاث بنات وبعد بعد واحدة يدوروا يدوروا بالاخير اجت دعاء وشفت اجرها مبتوره هي كانت بتمشي ولا كانت يعني في الارض تلعب 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 بال هي وشات يلعبوا بمي اه اه لكن لما انت لقيتيها لقيتوها لقوها تحت الغدد شهد صارت عندها كسر في الرقبه تفتت عظام وكذا مش في ميدان كانوا يجيبوا لها اجرها مره فضل دعاء اجرها بترت ساعه الاصابه مباشره راحت الجرح Three-year-old Dua now wears a prosthetic limb. As soon as the girls were strong enough, they came here to Jordan, only a few kilometers across the border from the Syrian town where their extended family still live amid intense fighting. مساء أو الصبح الصبح كأنك درع كأنك قاعد بسوريا. Every week for the last two years, Hassan has made the journey with his daughters to a specialist medical center in the Jordanian capital Amman. Around 550 people from Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Gaza, and Egypt come here each year to receive long-term care for complex war injuries from doctors working with the medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières. Of doctors without borders. Here, top surgeons and therapists from the region treat patients with the most severe burns, facial injuries, and limb damage, up to a fifth of whom are children. Iraqi orthopedic surgeon Dr. Rashid Fakhri has been involved in the project since it was first set up in 2006 in response to the war in Iraq and he now coordinates all surgical activity. Uh, this is the hospital, so we are here in the surgery department. This is the second surgical ward, and yeah. then we have two floors for rehabilitation. The majority are uh, victims of war, so in Iraq they are the victims of, of most of them are bomb car explosions, and in Syria also we face almost the same pattern. In Yemen it's a little bit different, it's more with, with bullet injuries rather than bomb explosions. Most of the countries around us, they are at least they can offer the emergency surgeries at a good level. So most of the patients are well treated in the beginning. Uh, but then after that, and those patients are neglected in their home country. So that's why MSF is now sort of support for uh, these patients. I'm going to find Dr. Ashraf in clinic. He is the head surgeon and maxillofacial specialist of this unit. Palestinian Jordanian surgeon Dr. Ashraf Al Bustanji specializes in treating people with serious face and neck injuries who often need multiple surgeries over many years. He aims to get his patients to the point where they can not only function 
but also feel comfortable showing their face in public. So this is a patient also a victim of explosion. All this area, the soft tissue and bone was missing. And this is dental implants. We are preparing him to have the teeth. No, the week that comes, the one behind, we want to open more. حتى يصير فتحة أوسع حتى مين يجي ركب الأسنان يقدر يركب الأسنان عرفت شلون؟ I mean there's such specific injuries these if the shrapnel was just a few inches this way they they wouldn't survive your carotids are gone yeah exactly it's a bit higher the brain is gone yeah so that's why you're getting these very specific mid face injuries we can put them yeah he will either die or will you know there will be some neurological deformity if it's lower hit one of these big vessels they will not survive they will bleed and they will die. That's so weird. somehow they are like. 19 year old Syrian Mohammed Abdel Muhsin was also severely injured in an explosion and is due to have his next reconstructive operation tomorrow. So, Mohammed, where are you from? And how long have you been in, in Jordan? About 14, 14 months. months yeah. It's a while. And what was the injury initially? So this X-ray shows exactly the amount of bone defect. All this is missing bone. And this is only a plate that holds these two sides of the lower jaw together. It's pretty graphic to illustrate um, Muhammad's injuries. There is there is no lower jaw whatsoever. His airway must have been compromised, <laughs> compromised when he was first injured. It's yes. a wonder he's alive yeah. at all. That's you? I call you your name, call you your name. Yeah. You wait, I think I'm sure. 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 في رمضان الماضي كنت أول مرة باكل فيها وأنا قاعد جاهز لبكرة إن شاء الله إن شاء الله. After being patched up in a field hospital in Syria, Mohammed arrived in Jordan in 2014 and has already been operated on five times by Dr. Ashraf. First, the surgeon joined Mohammed's lower jawbone together with a titanium plate. He then cut loose a strip of muscle from Mohammed's chest to cover the metal plate, leaving the blood supply connected to improve chances of the graft succeeding. After three weeks, the transplanted tissue was able to receive blood directly from the face, so the muscle was cut and the remainder stitched back onto the chest. The next step is to use bone from Mohammed's pelvis to rebuild his lower jaw, so he can eventually have teeth implants. So tomorrow, we will reconstruct the bone. It is a lengthy procedure, and it will be very important for him. I'm Jordanian by birth, but my family comes from uh, West Bank. So I can understand when suddenly you leave your home, as a Syrian, for example, your, your farm, your work, your friends, your family, and suddenly you are treated in a hospital in Amman. Nobody around you, different environment, everything. So I think I more understand it because something, you know, hidden in me. Many of the medics here share the experience of exile with their patients, having also been forced to flee the region's conflicts in search of a safe place to work and live. For many who come to the hospital, Recovery doesn't just involve surgery. It also means overcoming the psychological scars of war and learning to use their bodies again. Today, Dua has her first physiotherapy appointment using her new prosthetic leg. Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Okay, ma'am. 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 تنام معها الطرف يعني تنيموا معاه ما تخليش حدا يقرب عليه يعني مثل مثل اللعبة يعني هي تفكر لعبة يعني بعمرها لأنه لما ركبت كان عمرها سنة وثمان شهور بس What time is the physiotherapy today? العاد تقريبا بس طرفها قوي يلا بسرعة لا 
<تصفيق> يلا ابوي ان شاء الله نروح اوبس وقعت يا تعال شيل شنو علينا تعي تعي شيل شيل يا تعي شيل شنو علينا يا تعي يلا تعي ها مشي تعي شيل Just uh, do some mof modification for the processes. Duhaz's stump obviously comes down to a, a sh quite a sharp bone, the shin bone, so that you can't really put too much pressure through that. It causes pain, it can aggravate the skin. So they've had to modify the leg just so that her knee is walked, walking slightly bent. So rather than walking on the stump, she's walking on a greater surface area. And that's why she needs this little modification. And when you do leg uh, walking training, are there special exercises or is it literally playing? She used to, uh, to have uh, a prosthesis before. So she is familiar with the, the mm. prosthesis. So oh, she's, she's doing, it, doing it without instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so most of the session is uh, like a play time. Try to, to use her leg without. She recognizes that I'm mm. using my legs. Wahid. اثنين ثلاثة أربعة She's doing fine She doesn't need our help She can't do it It seems that she is good She seems very good وهي بعد من البنت يعني البنت الحمد لله شايفة أنه عندها نسبة ذكاء يعني أتوقع له إن شاء الله مستقبل يعني يكون الله يعوضها مستقبل حلو أحسن يعني من بدال إجراء. While Dua continues with her physiotherapy, her sister Shahad has a class with the psychosocial counselor Muntaha Mashayakh. These two sisters, when they just arrived to the project, started to get their treatment. Uh, we face many problems because they were uh, traumatized. As Shahad was older when the bomb hit, she's experienced more severe psychological effects. When she even hear uh, the plain uh, voice, sound and then the, yeah, the sound, she starts screaming, uh, shouting, uh, because she keeps in her mind the, the explosion when it was yes. done. You can understand. Yes. <laughs> Shahad was also afraid of the doctors in white coats who were treating her leg injuries. First time she was crying and shouting and screaming. Second, third, fourth. And after uh, this period of time, she became more sociable, interact, play, talk, everything. Yeah. A huge uh, changes, really. While the bulk of Shahad and Dua's treatment here is now over, Mohammed's journey to recovery is still very much ongoing. He's going to be grafting a piece of bone from his, somewhere around his pelvis and putting it into his jaw to make a new jaw bone. Just preparing him for anesthetic. There's a lot of scar tissue. He's had so many operations. Even for me, it's sounding a bit too crunchy. It's around 11 centimeter bone defect. We uh -huh. try to bridge all, all this defect. All around? Yeah. In one piece? In three pieces, mainly. Dr. Ashraf chisels off the bone from the pelvis and screws it to the plate to reform Mohammed's lower jaw. After five hours, the surgery has been a success and all that's left to do is to stitch Mohammed back up. You can imagine with the number of patients yeah. that you have to treat, yeah. you could only aim for functional, but you go right to the end, the next step, cosmetic as well. Uh, you might give the patient the function that he had before uh, the injury, but still he's not happy. He is psychologically not functioning. Some of the patients, they don't want to leave the project because they are afraid to come outside. They are here with people like them with distorted faces, with amputated limbs, with burns. So they see people like them. We have also to, to, to give the patient confidence and self-esteem. Uh -huh. 
ما في وجع ابدا Five years from now, I hope that this patient, that he went back to his native city, Homs. Uh, he built a stable life. He is accepted by the community. He is married with children. And uh, all the time, remember our staff here, our team, that we did something valuable for him. When this reconstructive surgery project began, it was supposed to be temporary, to deal with the fallout of war in Iraq. But since then, over 3,700 people have been treated and the need shows no sign of abating. A testament both to the continuing horror of war and to the potential for healing.